learning outcomes. After studying this module, you shall be able to know about super zapping and trap doors. Learn how to detect super zapping, identify trap doors, how to avoid super zapping and trap doors. Introduction Super zapping is applying software that avoids normal security limitations to permit illegal entrance to data. For example, such a database may give instructions straight to the disk drivers without going through normal file. A software bug or some unknown software features are those which a cracker keeps back after misusing a system to be able to return to an advanced stage in time. However, that back or trapdoors can be a role of poor software design that is during its development, a programmer may have built in a software bug that was not taken out when the software was put in production. The unaware consumer who purchases the software becomes in a sense a target in waiting for a crack attack. Super zapping and trap doors. Super zapping. Virtually, every network has a member of staff known as a system administrator who has the highest level of privileges in the system. For example, he or she is allowed to read, delete and create files in any part of the system. Super zapping is the name given to the method whereby an unauthorized intruder manages to gain these privileges and uses them in a criminal way by, for example, stealing the passwords of the network users. The term is derived from the Super Zap program, a valuable program developed by IBM, which allowed mainframe computer administrator to override normal security measures in way to respond to any emergency like an unsuccessful device. Super Zapping got its label from Super Zap, a macro computer service program used in most IBM PC centers. Computers sometimes stop, malfunction, or for other reasons need attention to those normal access methods do not allow. In such cases, a universal access program is needed, making the system vulnerable to tampering. It is the main key to the system and a powerful and potentially dangerous tool if kept in a program library instead of secure from unauthorized use. Detection of Super Zapping Illegal use of Super Zap programs can result in alteration of data files that are generally updated only by manufacturer programs. Typically, few, if any, controls can detect changes in the data file from previous runs. Applied computer programmer does not expect this kind of fraud. The dominion of concern is restricted to the application program and its communication with statistic files. Therefore, the fraud is identified only when the recipients of regular computer output reports from the production program notify management that a discrepancy has occurred. 
Furthermore, PC managers often accomplish that the evidence specifies data entry error. Since it would not be a feature of a computer or program error. Considerable time can be wasted in searching the wrong areas. When management concludes that illegal file changes have occurred independent of the application program associated with the file. A search of all computer user logs may disclose the use of a super zap program. But this is improbable if the committer anticipates the probability. Infrequently, there may be a record of a request to have the file positioned online in the PC system if it is not characteristically in that approach. Otherwise, the changes would have to occur when the production program using the file is being run or just before or after it is run. Avoiding super zapping. Powerful system services that avoid typical control which can be used to damage data and code, but network supervisors can control such super zap programs by limiting access to them and software designers can help network managers by enforcing capability checking at runtime. Security systems using menus can restrict users to specific tasks. The usual security matrix can prevent unauthorized access to powerful utility programs. Some programs themselves can track the prospective users which actually have suitable competences. Example, root access. Ad hoc inquiry programs can occasionally be limited to read only in any given database. On certain systems, entrance control lists allow explicit insertion of operator sets which may access a file comprising super zap programs for read and write operations. Aside from consuming usual operating system security, one can also inactivate programs provisionally in manner which obstruct with, but don't preclude, unauthorized access. For example, a system supervisor can reversibly eliminate the competencies permitting communicating or batch implementation from dangerous programs. It may be needed to remove several apparatuses overall from general accessibility. For instance, special investigative utilities that substitute the operating system should regularly be unreachable to illegal people. Such diagnostic tool could be kept in a safe. For example, with written authorization required for access in an emergency, the combination to the safe might be obtained from a sealed side envelope that would show when it has been unlocked. Trap doors. A trap door is an entrance point in an information processing system which circumvents the normal safety measures. It is generally a hidden program or an electronic component which makes the protection system ineffective if certain not documented orders are placed to him. Moreover, 
The trap door is often activated by an event or a normal action. A trap door can also be a hole of safety in a system which was deliberately set up by the creators or the people in charge of maintenance. The principal interest of these trap doors is not always harmful. Certain operating systems, for example, have accounts users with high privileges intended to facilitate the work of the maintenance men. But in this case, they must be documented. The best guaranteed against the trap doors is to use software whose source codes public and are analyzed by a maximum of people. Trap doors, also referred as back doors, attempt to avoid conventional cleanup procedures by system managers, such as continuous changes to secret code, cleaning of the registry configuration files, and the removal of suspicious software. Moreover, back doors have a tendency to avoid logging processes. Thus, although each entering joining to a system is apparently logged, probabilities are that the back door provides a means of logging deprived of being logged. Finally, back doors are covered in the real sense that they hide well. Even if the system manager scans a system Looking for suspicious software, chances are that Backdoor has used techniques capable of missing the scan. One more vital point about Backdoors, operators of computer systems are in huge part the cause of their own cracking troubles. Although most PCs nowadays permit BIOS software, the software that principally runs when the PC starts to be set to avert the booting of the PC without and managers first typing the password since so numerous consumers misplace or forget their passwords. Biases frequently have backdoor passwords to permit the legitimate password to be set. Additionally, much distance network apparatus such as routers, switches, and dial-up banks have backdoors for remote telnet. These are bits of code embedded in programs by the programmers to quickly gain access at a later time, often during the testing or debugging phase. If a corrupt programmer deliberately leaves this code in or merely fails to recall to remove it, a possible security hole is hosted. Hackers frequently plant a backdoor on previously compromised systems to gain later entrance. Trap doors can be nearly impossible to eliminate in a trustworthy way. Often, reformatting the system is the only sure method. A trap doors in a logging system might take the form of a hard-coded user and password combination which gives access to the system. Example, sort of trap doors was used as a plot device. New browser versions to suppress the starvation due to workload on browser. A video game like simulation mode and direct interaction with the artificial intelligence. Although the number of trap doors in systems using proprietary software, software whose source code is not publicly available, is not widely credited.
they are nevertheless frequently exposed. Programmers have even succeeded in secretly installing large amounts of benign code as Easter eggs in programs. Although such cases may involve official forbearance, if not actual permission. Apps, games request in Facebook used to ask you to allow the apps to access your information to further process. Most of the people simply allow the apps request to access their information. Many computer worms such as So Big and My Doom and the covert Skynet install a trap doors on the affected computer. Generally, a PC on broadband running insecure versions of Microsoft Windows and Microsoft Outlook. Such trap doors appear to be installed so that spammers can send junk emails from the infected machines. Others such as the Sony BMG rootkit distributed silently on millions of music CDs through late 2005 are intended as DRM measures. And in that case, as data gathering agents, since both surreptitious programs they installed routinely contacted central servers. A traditional trap doors is a symmetric trap doors. Anyone that finds the trap doors can in turn use it. The notion of an asymmetric trap doors was introduced by Adam Young and Moti Young in the Proceedings of Advances in Cryptology, Crypto 96. An asymmetric trap doors can also be used by the attacker who plants it, even if the full implementation of the trap doors become public. Example, via publishing, being discovered and disclosed by reverse engineering, etc. Also, it is computationally intractable to detect the presence of an asymmetric trap doors under black box queries. This class of attacks has the term kleptography. They can be carried out in software, hardware, for example, smart cards or a combination of the two. The theory of asymmetric trap doors is part of a larger field now called cryptovirology. Planted problems. IT security consultants are primarily honest, trustworthy professionals. A minor minority, however, abuse their privileged rank to plant back doors into business uses and other programs in way to deliver illegal access to critical system data and services. A back door is basically formed by mounting code that either identifies a special input arrangement such as a PIN or a certain username. Once in place, a backdoor allows the perpetrator and any other people he cares to share his secret with to view and download data, run programs or even obtain complete system access and control. Backdoors have been used to steal credit card numbers, download secret business plans, and siphon funds from company accounts and for a variety of other illegal activities. Crooked consultants plant trapdoors since 
they think that they are clever and won't get caught. Unfortunately, this is true in many cases. Backdoor can make rapid riches and many committers are able to escape deprived of a hint. On the other hand, this doesn't mean that trades are ineffective to protect themselves against backdoors and their creators. Careful planning and thorough oversight can ensure that only honest, backdoor-free software is installed on company system. Prevention and Detection Removing a backdoor is a difficult and complex process. The ideal approach is to make sure that a backdoor is never planted in the first place. This is best achieved by hiring a security consultant who works for a well-known and respected organization. An individual with an extensive track record of working with companies in a particular field. The worst approach is to hire a consultant perhaps via a Craigslist ad or a newspaper classified without asking for credentials and a verifiable list of clients. Hiring a qualified, verified consultant greatly decreases the chance that a backdoor will be planted. But isn't a rock-solid security guarantee. Businesses still need to regularly check their systems for the presence of unauthorized code. A variety of vendors including security offer tools that help businesses scan and audit their computers and networks for the presence of backdoors. Many businesses could dramatically enhance their IT security and decrease the backdoor threat if they simply installed the free security patches and malware provided by software vendors. That's always a good idea since removing a detected backdoor is as difficult as eradicating any serious piece of malware. In many instances, the only solution is to wipe the system clean and reinstall a backdoor-free version of the software. One thing when any business discovers a backdoor needs to do is to determine how the code was planted. In some cases, a consultant or an in-house IT employee may inadvertently install commercial software that includes a backdoor. Some software vendors include backdoors in their products to enable maintenance tasks or to recover lost passwords. This is a bad practice, but it happens. So, Check with the appropriate vendor before accusing a consultant of planting backdoor code. On the other hand, if all evidence points to the fact that a backdoor was indeed installed by a consultant, report the incident to the police. Backdoor seeding is a crime, not a civil matter. Law officers, not company representatives, are best equipped to confront and handle potentially dangerous data thieves. Summary Criminals have adapted the advancements of computer technology to further their own illegal activities. Unfortunately, their actions have far outplaced the ability of police to respond effectively. Investigators must know the materials to search and seize, the electronic evidence to recover and the chain of custody to maintain. Without question, law enforcement 
must be better prepared to deal with the many aspects of computer related crimes and the techno criminals who commit them thank you